Will TikTok be banned in the US outright? People on the popular social media app are definitely worried. <laughs> Guess who's really scared because TikTok might get banned? Oh, me! So, we all have heard the news about TikTok. Is TikTok really gonna get banned in the US? It's already banned in India. But will the US ban TikTok? I don't know if this is gonna happen, but go follow me on Instagram. And they have reason to be concerned. The U.S. Congress just banned TikTok from all government devices in December. And beyond that, there's another piece of legislation that's making its rounds in Congress that would ban TikTok outright on all U.S. devices. Now, to be sure, there only is limited bipartisan support for this bill, but concerns are growing among members. So all this really leads to two questions. Will TikTok be banned in the U.S.? And why? Welcome to the DMV Download Podcast. I'm Luke Garrett, your host. And today we're really gonna look into this question. Will TikTok be banned outright in the US and why? And to figure this out, we talked to one of the nation's leading critics of TikTok. Mark Warner, 54321. That's Virginia Senator Mark Warner. He also heads the Senate Intelligence Committee. And not only that, before he made it to Congress, he was actually an investor in tech firms. He did quite well. He's actually one of the richest members of Congress. Anyway, that's beside the point. On this show, we're going to talk about Senator Warner's main concerns and why he says that he believes former President Trump was actually right back in 2018 when he tried to ban TikTok outright. Senator Warner, thanks for being here. Luke, thanks for having me. Now, I mentioned Trump's executive order at the top, but before we get there, when did you first hear about TikTok and was it concerning to you at the beginning? My concerns with TikTok really go to the whole question of my concerns around social media. A lot of this arose, I'm the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, I used to be the vice chairman back in 2016, when frankly, Russia massively interfered in our elections, where mm. they created fake identities on platforms like Facebook, where they manipulated content through YouTube. And it, it, it alerted me to the notion that while my background was in technology before I was in politics, right and social media has brought some good things, there is a dark underbelly mm. in terms of how social media can be used both to collect information and, frankly, to manipulate information. So I had these concerns, and again, you know, we've done a, in Congress, both sides, both parties have done a dreadful job of putting even any um, guardrails on mm. even American social media companies. So I was concerned. In 2018, you know, TikTok was relatively new. Right. I didn't know that much about it. I had some concerns, but as I said, and I don't normally say this, Donald Trump on this one was right. Right. And and the concerns about TikTok grew from two bases. One, and I'll come back to this in terms of the social media concerns, mm. but it also comes from a growing recognition that back in about 2015, 2016, Inside China, the laws were changed to make absolutely clear that any Chinese company, first loyalty has to be to the Communist Party of China. It's not to the shareholders, it's not to their customers, it's not to the owners. And sitting on the Intelligence Committee, we have seen China and the Communist Party steal intellectual property. We've seen them launch uh, companies like Huawei, which is in the wireless uh, space, called fi in, within 5G, and that was a national security threat. We actually ended up prohibiting Huawei on American networks. Mm. Um, so there's concern about China and its use of these technology tools has been growing for some time. So you've got this combination of a extraordinarily powerful social media tool with all its potential downside, and then the ability of the Communist Party to both collect this data and manipulate some of the, the information that Americans are receiving, and that is a, um, a recipe that uh, I think is a huge national security concern. Mm. And just so I'm understanding and our listeners are understanding, there's kind of two main concerns here all of it which has to deal with China having information. One is they have personal information, possibly, you know, your location, possibly your face, you know, all the things that you post. And then secondly, there's this idea of propaganda and using one of the most powerful social medias out there right now to kind of control the narrative, whether it be national security, whether it be political. Um, are those kind of the two wings of this concern? Yes, let's go into, let's go into each one of them separately. 
you know, there's about, and the estimates go up and down, about 66 million Americans are active users on TikTok uh, almost on a daily basis. And the average amount of time, this is, blows my mind, 95 minutes yeah. a day? Mm. You know, an hour and a half a day on Easy. TikTok? Yeah. And there is a lot of information uh, that, biometric information, sometimes you can even, I, I know some people, I, I don't have TikTok on, on any of my devices, uh, you, you, you may put in an eye scan, um, and they're showing you different ways to you know, have your eyes with different colors. Well, that is extraordinarily important biometric information that I believe is ending up back in China. So all of this data that's being collected um, on American users, TikTok squares, it's not being held in, in servers in China, but repeatedly there have been other press exposés that press have shown feed. that Chinese engineers gets access to this data. Um, we, we've seen China, for example, with its, its own social media companies like uh, with WeChat, Tencent, Badu, others. Literally, China has created a social credit card system where Chinese citizens, they're so monitored in, 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 that you receive a credit score. Now, that's not in terms of how, how much money you can spend. Right. Your credit score is how loyal you are to the Communist Party. So they have used their own technology tools to have this kind of Orwellian surveillance mm. state. So the idea that the possibility exists that this information is being collected from these millions of Americans, many young people, and the potential that it is being stored at some point in Chinese servers. And in the world, when we think about well, what, what does that mean? Well, maybe it means at some point in the future you could be blackmailed. Maybe it means at some point in the future, as we think about the notions around artificial intelligence and as AI develops, mm. uh, one of the key criteria in AI is who has the most data. So China collects not only data on its own citizens, but through these tools, um, potentially collecting data on Americans. And we know, for example, China has was the entity that hacked into the OPM. You know, we think about the DMV here, a lot yeah. of federal employees, that was almost a decade ago. Uh, they've not used that, but they've, they've got that data. So there is this massive, at least potential of data collection. And even though TikTok is saying they're not doing that, and remember TikTok is controlled by a Chinese company named ByteDance, this is, an, uh, this is a security threat. And again, don't take just simply my word for it, the U.S. military has prohibited the use of TikTok on devices for our members of the armed forces. The director of the FBI has said this is a national security concern. We, the FBI, do have um, national security concerns uh, about the app. Its uh, parent company is controlled by the Chinese government. The head of the CIA in public testimony has right. indicated this is a security concern. So, and, and what's been frustrating to me is the Biden administration, which I've been generally supportive of, has said for the last year, we understand there is this potential threat of data collection. Give us some time mm. to figure out a way to build a technology solution to make sure that American data is safe. A server wall or something. A server wall, but it, you almost, my concern is server wall is one thing, but if you've actually got the, the algorithms and the underlying code is still being written in China, I don't know how you build that server wall broad enough, but they've had a year and they still haven't come through with a solution. So point one is the ability to collect this massive amount of data. Right. Point two, think about TikTok as a communications tool, a broadcasting network. And the best evidence of how this can be manipulated is the TikTok that Chinese citizens receive. Mm. Only post videos and, and other images that are, frankly, they're patriotic, they're about science, they're encouraging you to, you know, uh, study hard, uh, kind of eat your vegetables approach. Healthy social media. Yeah, healthy social media. The TikTok that Americans and the rest of the world get, it's addictive. It's, it's, it is body shaming. It is, you know, fun videos. And there's a lot of creative things on TikTok. I'm yep. not saying that there's not some pretty cool stuff. But the genius on the, uh, of the site is the brilliance of the algorithms that reinforce the images that you want to see. Mm. And the example that, that the Chinese kids see a different TikTok than the American kids shows that those algorithms can be dialed up and down. And even though I'm not saying the Communist Party is literally posting videos that American kids will see, but if, if suddenly you're seeing videos that 
that only say, well, Taiwan's really part of China. Right. Or the Uyghurs are really not being persecuted inside China. Or even more, uh, the kind of malicious activity that tries to pit one American against the other. That is very problematic to me. Right. And the issue seems to be that so many Americans are rooted, millions of them, in TikTok. Now, Congress has banned TikTok from government phones. A lot of governors have done the same. But, you know, they could just download TikTok to their personal phones. And TikTok could then get a lot of the same information they got if it was on government phones. So is that sort of just a Band-Aid solution? It is a Band-Aid solution. These are partial solutions, first to acknowledge that. My hope is that the word is kind of is getting out so that responsible adults, responsible parents are thinking, well, maybe I ought to think twice about my kid being on TikTok and spending 95 minutes a day. You know, so there are other efforts that are trying to legislate a way to prohibit TikTok. I mean, all out. All out. I have not joined those efforts to date for two reasons. One, I wanted to give the administration time to come up. You know, if there is a technical solution, let me see it. Mm. They've had a year plus. My patience has just about run out. Right. The other is there are some First Amendment challenges about banning a specific app. So how you structure a prohibition that is you know, starts on a general principle and then comes down to TikTok rather than simply isolating out a single application source uh, is something that we are thinking through. But I think, as we saw the other day, this passed unanimously in the Senate. This is something that is extraordinarily bipartisan. Mm. I think there is a way to get to a legislative solution. It may not be the exact legislation out there, um, uh, but I think there will be a way to get to a legislative solution. Again, I'm happy to have the administration say they've got a technical solution, but they've had a year plus, uh, and, and I think what we're seeing is that their failure to act has now caused individual states to act. It's causing us right. in the Congress to at least prohibit the, the federal employee uses. That won't be totally prohibitive, um, but I think the, this is feeling like a sea change mm. literally in the last 30 plus days. Right, right. And, you know, you mentioned those two fears, kind of the propaganda fear, Chinese propaganda, and also the personal information. You also are chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Are there any, like, fears that you have or pieces of evidence that you have that, you know, the public might not know about that concerns you? Obviously, you can't talk about those. Well, but I, I can't talk. I, I will say this, that the, I think the challenge of this century is the technology competition with China. And China's a great nation, and my beef is with the Communist Party. It is not with the Chinese people. I mean, mm. we've seen the Chinese people themselves you know, revolt against the government in terms of the COVID lockdowns and the enormous censorship. But I, I mentioned this issue a little while earlier of, of wireless communications and so-called 5G, the next generation of wireless, and the Chinese company Huawei that was selling around the world, frankly, was selling into a, a number of American telecom networks. Interesting enough, and this is in the public domain, where Huawei was most successful was where our intercontinental ballistic missile systems were. They were almost 100% overlap of these rural telcos wow. in those areas. You don't see that as a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. And, and you know, it has taken us years, but we are actually paying telcos to rip out the Huawei equipment because, you know, you got a phone call that goes from St. Louis to Los Angeles. It might be routed through Beijing. Mm. So we have seen the concern around 5G. I was the proud author of the legislation around the so-called CHIPS bill, the semiconductor um, bill that says we need to bring back American manufacturing so we're not as dependent upon semiconductor chips which go into every device uh, being made in China or uh, lots of the cutting edge ones made in Taiwan and with the potential adversarial relationship with Taiwan, that's a security threat. I think we are going to have competition with China on issues around artificial intelligence. I've yep. mentioned that. Around advanced energy. 20 years ago, in America, we controlled the whole solar industry in terms of production. That's all in China at this point, over 90%. Um, we're looking at advanced batteries. Many of those, all those Tesla batteries, yep. they're all made in China. So this competition with China on technology, I mentioned advanced energy, I think synthetic biology. We think about the, the sourcing of 80% uh, of our drugs in terms of the chemical compounds come from China. This is the competition of our time. Mm. And so the fact that 
TikTok is one example of, of where, you know, China's got a, a good product, but it is a national security concern. Um, I think we're going to have to deal with it, but I think there's going to be a series of other areas in technology domains where we, along with our allies, I don't want to turn this into an America versus China only, along with democracies and other non-authoritarian countries around the world, need to step up both in terms of investment in technology and also making sure that these technologies are secure. It, just again, the analogy, I'm, I'm old enough to remember the battles with the Soviet Union and Right, the I was War. thinking about yeah, like but, spies and, and spies buggings, and, but this but is this everywhere. this is different, right. This is the old use of spying would be, you know, spies would steal from each other secrets about planes and ships and rockets. Now, national security goes into telecommunications networks, it goes mm. into healthcare systems, it goes into the whole domain of cyber, it goes into the social media realm. So... And, and, in, and in China, the Soviet Union was an ideological threat and a military threat. It was never an economic threat. We, our economy always dwarfed the Soviet Union. China has been a remarkable economic miracle over the last 40 years mm. in terms of its economic success. They are investing in many of the cutting edge technologies at a rate greater than America and greater than the West. So we're going to have to step up our game um, to stay competitive because China views, I believe, the Communist Party of China views a lot of these technology competitions as a zero-sum game. They have to win mm. and others have to lose. They have thought, and, and they're, they've made quite clear that Xi Jinping, the Chinese president, that they think that democracy, America, and others are in the decline, and this is the rise of China. I think we have to stand firm against that because, as we've seen, just the kind of authoritarian regime that they've created for the very Chinese people is not something I think that needs to be exported around the world. And you mentioned the economy, and there are a lot of small businesses that kind of use TikTok as their chief marketing tactic. You know, on this podcast, we have a TikTok uh, account, you know, maybe we should reconsider that, but, you know, it's an incredible way to get your message out. Like, that is just, you know, a marketing fact, how will you convince people who have intertwined their business so closely with this product to, well, to say I goodbye? Would, listen, I still believe that we need to put some guardrails even on American social media. The fact that we still don't have a privacy legislation in America, when, whether you're talking about Facebook or Google or YouTube, the fact that we don't have any responsibility for content controls. I mean, if we say something outrageous on this broadcast, yeah. you know, and it's a flat out lie, you know, you could be held accountable. I could be held accountable. Yeah. You know, you post something on Facebook, there is no accountability. Something called Section 230 that gives them kind of a get out of jail free card. The fact that we we don't even have our own social media companies um, tell us how much data they're collecting on all of us. So, you know, we've not even done a good job on our own. American companies, but the idea that you then take something that's as powerful as TikTok and acknowledge the fact that at the end of the day, ByteDance that owns TikTok has to be by Chinese law responsible to the Communist Party, and the Communist Party has been willing to use its technology companies for its own authoritarian gains, that ought to scare the dickens of us. Now, could there be a, a an American version, a non-Chinese version? Of TikTok, I you know I think our innovation is every bit as good as as uh, the Chinese, but this is a um, this is an issue that's not going to go away. And in a place where a lot of times there's a lot of as anybody in the DMV knows, a lot of feuding and fighting between the political parties. Yeah, this is an issue where there is virtual unanimous agreement. The challenge of China, the challenge of the technology competition, and as we saw the other day in the Senate, this bill passed unanimously. Right. So I, as I mentioned, we have TikTok on this, you know, podcast. So I'm going to take a video of you, and what would you say to people on TikTok? I'm going to post this video on TikTok. People who are scrolling, you know, what would you say to them? I would say, be responsible. Realize that the things you're posting may end up on a server in China. Recognize as well that the kind of content you're seeing it seems fun and creative, but that there may be at some point some engineer that's dialing the type of content you're receiving so that suddenly messages are being relayed. And I know TikTok says, well, we don't try to do politics that much, but you know, a lot of Americans get their news from TikTok. So the fact that that is being driven um, by potentially 
Communist Party propagandist, I think you just need to bear it in mind. Um, and I think, again, we as policymakers need to do a better job of explaining, laying out the evidence, uh, and hopefully um, people will be more responsible. Well, I think it's an issue that's pretty complicated. You know, I think people go on to their phones. They don't think about who's controlling it. It's just there, and it's quick, and it's really entertaining, and it's kind of like a mind drug. You know, you love it. It's fun. You can scroll on it for hours. I've caught myself doing that. Do you see this as the beginning of a conversation in the country? Well, I think it's, it is a, a conversation that is, has already been put forward. I mean, the fact that the armed forces is saying we don't want our military members using it, the fact that the CIA has come out, the fact that the FBI has come out, um, the fact that we've seen this movie before with other Chinese tech companies, um, Huawei, the telecom company that was, was wireless communications, and we actually have had to go out and spend taxpayer money to rip out some of these yeah. systems because they're national security. The fact that we've got pretty good agreement that we can't have all of our semiconductors potentially made in Asia and, and be dependent upon that and trying to bring some of those jobs home and bring that innovation home. I think this is an ongoing challenge. And on top of that, I, I would simply urge listeners to say, shame on us, Congress, for not putting any even guard rules in place for American social media. But how many times over the years have we talked about, you know, the level of hate speech and other things on Facebook or, you know, some of the controversy that's happening on Twitter now with Elon Musk. Elon Musk, by the way, who unfortunately um, is so dependent upon the largesse of the Chinese Party. Again, think about where all those Tesla batteries are made. They're all made in China. Mm. And I think um, and if you look at what Mr. Musk has said about the, the Communist Party, all very nice things as opposed to what he said about the American government. Um, so this is a this is one more component of what I think is this again um, this challenge between authoritarian regimes represented by China and Russia and non-authoritarian regimes not just so-called NATO or Western but you know lots of friends in Asia the, the Singapore's of the world the Japan's the South mm. Koreas lots of folks in Africa and South America you know, would like to be on a non-authoritarian side but what we've got to offer and and this is, again, what we had to come up with a solution with Huawei. People would say, okay, what do we use instead? So we've been promoting some additional innovation in that field. But we've got to have, if you don't want to use TikTok, what is the alternative that may still be fun right. and, and a little bit addictive, but at the end of the day <laughs> still has some level of that the company that, is, that has that technology is not having its strings pulled by Communist Party functionaries. Mm. Senator Mark Warner, thank you so much for your time. It's a complex issue, and we'll be talking about it more, I'm sure. Thanks so much. Now, after talking to Senator Warner, I did reach out to TikTok to see if they have any response to his claims that TikTok is taking people's personal data and giving it to the Chinese Communist Party. TikTok had no comment. And as we close out this episode, there are a few points I just want to note. As I was trying to understand what TikTok is, one big question I had in my head was what separates it from Instagram, Facebook, Twitter? And the biggest thing I found was that the goal of TikTok is not necessarily to connect people like Facebook is and like all these other social media sites. The biggest driving idea behind TikTok is learning about what you want to see. Everything about TikTok is designed to learn about you, how much time you spend on each video, what keystrokes you pick, all of these things are geared to learning what you want to see, and then it gives you what you want to see, and that's why it's so addictive and so interesting to watch. It provides you with what it thinks you want, and the more you use it, it gets better and better at that very task, giving you what you want to see. And so even outside the realm of national security, it kind of raises some interesting questions about, you know, who's really doing the thinking when you're intaking information? When you read a newspaper, you know, you're scanning the articles, finding which headline really speaks to you, and then you go investigate further. But with TikTok, you know, the information is being pre-selected for you, and then you are intaking it. It leaves me with the question, who's really doing the thinking there? TikTok or you? These are questions we don't have time to investigate, and I'm not even sure who I'd talk to about them. But at the very least, they're interesting to think about as you use TikTok and others around you certainly use TikTok. Thanks for joining us. That'll do it for us today on the DMV Download. This podcast is brought to you by WTOP News. 
Listen on 103.5 FM in the D.C. area, 107.7 FM in Virginia, 103.9 FM in Frederick, Maryland, online at WTOP.com, and of course on the WTOP News app. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Wednesday.